not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Just when all hope seemed lost, message of a new message to an unknown old great world. Freaking Metal Maker here, boys, coming to you live all the way from the farm, and have we got a video for you today. I've got a green line taped off. I'm going to put a nice cut here and get rid of this rough cut. And then I'm going to bring the cut down here and down there, and it's really hard to explain, but we're overlapping the roof. Alright, so I haven't made much video clips today because uh, you're probably not going to do what I'm doing. And even if you were, your cuts would not be in exactly the same place. So it's a whole lot of explaining for a whole lot of nothing. Anyhow, you can see she's lined up. And obviously there's only supposed to be one bolt hole, which means I have about an extra inch of height. So now I can do my clean cuts here, match them up pretty good. And uh, yeah, I have that ready to go. I have that ready to go. And uh, we are getting there. We are definitely getting there. Alright, so as you can see, she's been trimmed and maneuvered into place. And it's a perfect fit. It is an absolute perfect fit. It was raining and I didn't want rain to come down and go into my uh, pillars. So I tacked them real quick. And I put a tack up there on the roof to hold it in place. But all of those welds on the floor need to be done. I need to weld across the ceiling. I need to fix that there footwell and rocker. And uh, yeah. There's not really a whole lot to say because everything worked out perfectly. Here's what the first pass on the A-pillar looks like. Uh, it's a little bit bumpy right now, but that was just to fill the gap. I'm going to do another pass and then smooth it out. And as you can see for the floor right here, you know I have 150 holes. I didn't drill all the way through, which means I have a backer to all these holes that I need to plug weld right now. And the plan is to take this here sledge. I'm going to push these all down tight, tack them in place, plug them up, and uh, that floor will be really strong. It's actually really strong right now. Not the floor, but the whole van. You know, she's not going anywhere, boys. She's solid, but we're going to make it more solid. I don't do many things that impress myself, but let me tell you, I'm impressed by this job. I am totally floored with how good it went back together. And there you have it, I've welded over a hundred holes into this floor to make the two halves together and now she's good and solid. Oh yeah. It would have been better if I had uh, gas for my welder and I didn't use flux core wire, but it is what it is. And I'm out of flap discs so I cannot smooth out those welds. Or those ones, not that I really care because when the door is on there you won't be able to see that. Just like when the carpet is in you won't be able to see these welds on the floor. So pretty much I put a whole front end onto a different van and there's really no body work to do. You know, everything looks awesome. It was super easy. Anyhow, right now I guess I'm going to rebuild this footwell so that I could put a door on there and the door will not be in the way of rebuilding this footwell. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. Oi, she's bad. I'm going to remove this, cut out the bad stuff and start putting in new stuff. That's really the only body work left on the van is uh, that spot right there. There's a little dent <coughs> right there, very, very minor. Uh, if you come around to the back, one of these doors is dented pretty bad. Yeah, she's got a dent down there, a dent here, and the whole side of the door is caved in. 
So what I'm going to do is take one of those doors right there and I'm going to put it on. And then there will be no body work to do here either. So I just pulled off the black plastic piece and I vacuumed out the rocker and yeah it's pretty bad. Or not the rocker, the footwell. I guess the rocker does have a bit of damage. Uh, you can see it right there. That's nothing though. This is pretty common on Astro vans because they have a stupid plastic thing that sits in there and traps all the water right here. <clears throat> it's a pretty bad design. Anyhow, uh, yeah, we're going to fix it. We are going to fix it. So right now I'm going to cut out this. And rebuilding this is just like rebuilding a rod support. You want to keep as many reference points as you can. So I know that this needs to continue along up here. Match right there. I'm going to need an edge to slide my rubbers onto. And it dips down right there. You can see how it's supposed to dip down like this. So yeah, what we're going to do is just start cutting and chopping and welding new pieces in. Alright, the footwell is now opened and exposed and we can see all kinds and I do mean all kinds of crap in there. So this is exactly what happens to your rockers, right? Driver's side, they get in, their snowy boots are right here, the heat makes the snow melt, it comes down here, eventually it wears a hole right around here, then it starts going through the hole, then it gets down into here and just soaks this stuff and keeps it moist for months on end, and eventually you have no rockers left. Thankfully, you can see the inner rocker is still mint condition on this van. Yes, I know it has some rust, but it's as mint condition as you're going to get. She is now cleaned up and ready to be replaced. You just watched me cut a hunk of galvanized. What that is, is an old piece of a shelf from Food Basics. I'm not sure if you have that store in the States, but we have it here. And it's a great place to get galvanized metal. This is also a little bit thicker than body tin. And when I'm doing rockers, or things that are really bad for rust like this, I like to use galvanized to replace it because then it's a one-time job and will never rust again. Anyhow, you can see right here, kind of, sort of, I need a piece that comes this way and then down on an angle, which is why I like reusing old stuff. You can see it has a 90 degree angle and we need to open that up a bit so that it's closer to a 45. Actually, that's not quite 45, that's more like a 30, 30 degree angle. Anyhow, we're going to open it up and then, uh, yeah, see what happens. Alright, so I have that fine piece of galvanized welded into place, which was really hard to do because GM likes to put caulking over their old welds. I'm going to make this piece right there. You can see I have my 30 degrees angle down. Now I need a flat piece that goes in here, which I'm going to have to replace this. So what I'm going to do is bring this flat piece all the way out <coughs> to here, which means I'm going to cut this off right now. Alright, so I just welded that two inch strip in right there. And the camera's running out of battery power again, damn it. Now I'm going to cut a nice piece, kind of triangle, kind of knot, that's going to fill that in and cover up these ugly ends. And then I just need to cut a three quarter inch strip to go from here down the center. Here's the galvanized piece I just cut to go in here just like that uh, the dreaded moment of every job never happens when you start it's always when you're almost done 
Yep. I'm out of welding wire. That's all right because my dad and I are going to work out of town in the morning and we're going to pick up supplies. I need cutoff blades, I need grinding wheels, I need wire brushes, I need paint, paint brushes, I need POR 15, I need windshield adhesive, I need all kinds of stuff. Anyhow, at least the welder let me get it done to the point where you can see it can actually be done. There she is. It will look a lot better tomorrow when I get some flap discs to smooth out these ugly flux core welds. And I guess I will finish this on tomorrow's video. There's nothing really left to do except for massage that piece into a curved piece and weld it in place. And then grab a three quarter inch strip and weld it down here to hold the rubber seal in place. And that's it. Anyhow, the battery's almost dead too. What did you find? Oh, found a perfectly, perfectly good fender for my step side. Nice. Box step side. Right on. Here I am out buying shit and I got <laughs> <laughs> stuff at home. That's hilarious. You don't have the mate for it? Yeah, it's in the dry shed. Oh. Well, you're ready to go then. Look at this honking piece of crap. Pretty soon we are going to flip that onto its side, grab the fuel tank from underneath it, some more wiring that goes to the EVAP system, and then we are going to flip a blue Mustang onto its side, and I'm not sure what we're taking from it, but it doesn't really matter. The fun is in the flip. You found your other fender! He's got a fender. In the gas. Have you ever thought about making yourself a custom electric guitar with one of those? Nope. A Fender guitar? <laughs> I can't believe I had them and didn't know it. I cannot believe you had those and I can believe you didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we go shopping when everything is at home? Those are a million times better than the, than the ones we saw. <laughs> Anyhow, that's another day. That's another video. So comment, rate, subscribe, share the damn video. Don't do anything we wouldn't do and stay tuned for the next one. Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil.